वन वॉम वेलकम टू ऑल वॉम वेलकम टू ऑल टू सूर्या पेट खम बायो साइंस ऑनलाइन क्लास विच इज कंडक्टेड बाई डी सी बी माई सेल्फ आई एम कौशर अंजुम वर्किंग एज टी जी टी साइंस इन टी एस मॉडल स्कूल इमाम पेट विलेज सूर्या पेट मांडल एंड डिस्ट्रिक्ट टूडे आई एम गोइंग टू स्टार्ट थर्ड चैप्टर दट इज एनिमल टिश्यूज and uh, i am going to explain you the topic that is lab activity lab activity for the identification of various animal tissues so when i finish my class what are the learning outcomes children you will be able to know about various types of animal tissues their structures how they will appear and you will be able to do the activities which enable you to observe different animal tissues okay enable in the sense which make this acti these activities what i am going to show you make you to observe different animal tissues you can also give reason for some of the questions so what those questions are why we cannot identify various wbcs in the drop of blood which we have taken as a sample for the observation of blood cells and why should we soak flesh and bone of hen in vinegar or dilute hydrochloric acid for observing various tissues so i hope you have understood what you are going to learn today in my class so i'll begin this session with a simple question which is familiar to you that is how an organism is formed okay how an organism is formed this is the question you are coming across since you are class 8 and you have also come across came across in your class 9 so every organism is made up of the uh, basic unit called as cell so in your 8th standard you have learned cell is a basic structure and function of an organism so here uh, if you see the structure of the cell cell okay the this cell has combined and formed a group here which are also similar in their appearance what this cell do, does the same is done by all these cells so it is forming a group here so what this group of cells called means it is called as tissue so an organism is formed by cell a group of cells makes tissue again few tissues combine to form an organ okay here i have taken the example of heart which is an organ now few organs combine to form an organism so for example if you take myself or if you take yourself as an example you don't have only heart as an organ you have many more organs like uh, liver kidney skin bone muscles uh, isn't it so all these organs are made up of what they are made up of their respective tissues and those tissues are again further made up of cells so i hope you have understood how an organism is formed this is the recapitulation children because this concept you have learned in your second lesson plant tissues so now we i am going to explain you about uh, four organs i mean uh, the organ name and what it does what the function is done by them why i have taken only four organs here okay because i am going to explain you about the tissues of these four organs i am i am going to explain you i am going to show how these tissues appear so i have taken only these four organs as an example so if you see here the first organ is skin what is the what the skin do what the skin uh, do in our for our body means it covers our body and gives protection we all have skin on our body isn't it so what the skin do it it makes uh, it uh, protects us with what it protects us it protects us from external environment and also from the germs bacteria dust and all these things the bacteria cannot enter directly into our skin because because we have the protection of the skin next coming to the muscle 
muscle is an also an organ what it does the main function of muscle is to expand and contract or contract and expand so this is the function of the muscle so uh, it uh, we always in our daily life so we stand sit we do many functions so to stand we need uh, expansion of few muscles to sit we need a uh, contraction and expansion of few muscles both are interconnected so all these functions are because of the muscle the organ called muscle and if you take the heart the heart is also a muscle heart also expands and contracts uh, so that is a function next coming to the blood blood is also called as fluid connective tissue fluid connective tissue why it is called as a connective tissue because blood moves all over our body continuously and connects to all the organs all the parts so it is called as a fluid connective tissue now what is the function of the blood just to it is rotate uh, move, moving around or is it doing any function means it takes gases and various substances throughout the body it takes various gases if we take oxygen it is taken to all over body and it collects carbon dioxide from all over body and sends out like this it transports many substances throughout our body next coming to the bone bone is also an organ which gives the support and rigidity to our body okay bone or gives we are able to stand we are we are having a shape this is because of the uh, because of bones now this is the uh, this is the concept map for better understanding that what i am going to teach you and what i am using to teach that so here uh, animal tissues here four types of animal tissues i am going to explain you the first is epithelial tissue second is fluid tissue third muscle tissue and fourth is the bone tissue so i have taken how many organs children in the prior slide that i have taken four organs the first is the skin here i have taken epithelial tissue second is the blood fluid tissue fluid connective tissue and third muscle tissue muscles and bone tissue bone so to observe epithelial tissue to observe epithelial tissue what do we need we need skin of hen we need chicken skin and to observe the blood cells we need a small drop of our blood we need a small drop of human blood next coming to the muscle tissue what do we need we need a piece of raw chicken we need a small piece of raw chicken next coming to the bone tissue we need bone of chicken or bone a bone of hen okay the same next i hope you have understood what you are going to learn now let's uh, enter into the main topic that is lab activity okay lab activity for the identification of various animal tissues so here to do any lab activity we need apparatus apparatus in the means of materials what materials do we need we need a microscope a glass slide dilute hydrochloric acid if you are not uh, uh, if you don't have dilute hydrochloric acid you can also take vinegar in place of dilute hydrochloric acid you can take vinegar next a pair of forceps a pair of forceps a covered slip and a piece of chicken with its skin okay these are the materials required to observe what to observe epithelial tissue so here what is the procedure to observe epithelial cells so first you have to take one glass beaker then you have to add dilute hydrochloric acid or you can take vinegar then you have to add one piece of raw chicken in that you have to soak it for 2 hours okay after 2 hours what you have to do first what you have to do first you have to take a glass beaker add vinegar and also add a raw piece of chicken and let this apparatus as it is for 2 hours then you have to use a uh, forceps a pair of forceps so that you can take a small part of this uh, skin here you have to have taken the chicken piece the chicken piece must be along with its skin so you have to take a small outer skin portion and you have to transfer the skin portion onto the glass slide okay then you have to take one more slide first you have to take a glass slide on that you have to add the skin of the chicken then take one more glass slide and put it over the uh, first slide on which the skin is present 
Now you have two slides. Now you just press gently both the slides. Why you have to press both the slides means so that the skin can get compressed properly and can become flat so that every part can be clearly seen. Now you have to add a small drop of water and put a cover slip over it. Okay, now you have to observe this uh, slide under the microscope. Okay, so now you have to observe, observe this slide under the microscope. Then what we can see? We can see this type of image. So here you can see so many cells are forming a line. A group of cells is called as tissue. Okay, so what these cells are called? These are called as epithelial cells. Epithelial cells are a part of our skin. Epithelial cells are nothing but it, these cells forms our skin. So here, if you uh, first you have to observe these, this image properly. After observation, try to answer these questions. The first is how these cells are, how these cells are, are they similar or different? All these are looking same. That means a group of cells which are similar are called as tissues. So can we say this as tissue? Yes, we can say these cells as tissue. Are they compactly arranged or loosely packed? Compactly means tightly. Or these cells are very tightly, closely to one another or they are loose away from one another. They are close to one another. They are compactly arranged, right? Do you think these can form a continuous sheath to cover our body? Can you think by observing this, these cells which are formed one one after the other so closely, can you say these can form a sheath, a layer on our body? Yes, we can say because skin is a sheath. It is a continuous sheet. Do we have any breaks on our skin? No, we don't have. Skin is a continuous layer. It is a cover on our body. So these cells forms the continuous sheath uh, on our body, which is uh, this further makes the skin. I hope you have understood how epithelial tissue is observed. Next, we are going to see how uh, blood cells are seen. Uh, first, in the first slide, uh, in the table, I have shown you the first organ is the skin and second organ as blood. So if you see the blood, I'll uh, in brief, I'll explain you what is the composition of the blood. If you take the blood, uh, it contains both liquid and solid. Okay, if you see the blood, can you see any solid in that? No, you cannot see any solid because those solid, solid particles are very, very small, which can be observed only under microscope. So, but we can see the liquid part. Always the blood is watery, the blood is flowing, isn't it? So blood is the, blood contains a liquid part as well as solid parts. So what is the liquid part of the blood? It is plasma. The liquid part of the blood is the plasma and the solid part are called as blood cells, okay? Uh, children, you have to observe here, blood contains both liquid and solid part. Liquid part is called as plasma, solid part are called as blood cells. So how many types of blood cells do we have? Means three types. The one is red blood cells, second is white blood cells, third blood platelets. So three types of blood cells we have, okay. So all the group of red blood cells can be said as tissue? Yes, red blood cells can make tissue, white blood cells can make tissue and blood platelets can also make tissue. So here we will observe how we can observe. So here we can see how we can observe various cells in our blood. So what are the apparatus we need? What are the materials we need here means we need a needle, a cotton swab, cotton ball, next alcohol, glass slides, which are two in number and a microscope. These are the materials what you require to see the blood cells. Now you have to observe the procedure. So here children, I have uh, taken some pics uh, to perform this activity. If you see here, we have five fingers. Uh, this is a uh, index finger, this is the middle finger, and this is a ring finger, little finger, thumb. So here uh, we can use only these two fingers for uh, testing of our blood or for removal, for taking out of our blood. 
So why we have to use only these two? Why we cannot use the remaining fingers? Means we can get infection if we use the remaining this index finger and the little finger. So these two fingers are most suitable for the uh, pricking of uh, with the needle and taking out a drop of blood. So what is the position to uh, hold your finger? If you don't have any other person, you are only going to prick your finger. Then you have to hold this third finger with the help of other fingers. See here, children. So like this, you have to press so so that uh, the blood can accumulate here properly and the skin can become tight uh, and you have to prick it with a needle. Okay, once you have to prick it, you should not prick it multiple times. So you have to take a sharp needle uh, and you have to prick it once. So deeply, you should not prick it, just uh, superficially you prick it so that the blood can ooze out. So after pricking, you can get a small drop, out. you can get a small amount of blood. Now you have to uh, put that small drop of blood onto the glass slide, okay. After placing that drop of blood onto the glass side, glass slide, take one more glass slide and put that glass slide over the glass slide which has the blood. Now there are two glass slides. Now press gently, press the two slides gently so that the blood drop can expand properly. Now tap it slowly so that there, there will be no bubbles or no air bubbles. It can become a smear. Now this is called as smear. Okay, the next step, you have to observe this slide under microscope. Okay, so when you observe under microscope, what did you find means you can find only these type of red cells. You can find only these type of red cells, which I have given the name as RBCs. I have said you in the earlier slide, I have shown you uh, displayed two more words that uh, blood uh, along with the red blood cells, uh, white blood cells and blood plates, blood platelets are also present. But here when I observe, when I'm observing the blood, I'm able to see only the red blood cells. Why cannot I observe white blood cells and red platelets? So you have to think over this. So here I have one statement is there displayed on your screen. You can observe only RBCs in blood, in blood smear prepared by us to see blood cells, but we cannot see WBCs. Why? Why we cannot see WBCs? You have to think here. So why we cannot see means WBCs, that there is another method for the observation of WBCs. Uh, we need one uh, WBC pipette to suck the blood and we need some other reagents and we need some other slides so that we can count it. And one more thing, red blood cells are very, very large in number when compared to white blood cells. So as the ratio of red blood cells is more, we can observe only red blood cells and white blood cells are just in thousands. So it is very hard to find out. Okay, children. Next, when we are going to see our third, uh, we are going to see our, do our third lab activity, that is observation of muscle cells. So to observe our muscle cells, not our, but uh, we are taking the example of uh, chicken here. To observe the muscle cells, what the materials we need means, we need a piece of chicken vinegar or dilute hydrochloric acid. And we need two glass slides, a cover slip, a glass beaker, and a microscope. These are the materials we need for the observation of the muscle cells. So what is the procedure we have to follow means, again, what we have followed in our uh, first activity. That is first we have to take a glass beaker in that you have to add vinegar and in that you have to soak a, pea, a raw piece of raw chicken. Here there is no need of skin. If skin is present also, no problem. Then we have to soak it for two hours. After two hours, remove a part of a small portion of the uh, flesh, that is a small portion of the uh, chicken, and you have to add that piece of a small portion of the chicken onto the glass slide, okay? And then you have to take one more glass slide and put it over the first glass slide on which the part of chicken is present. Now, again, there will be two 
glass slides. Here you have, can observe uh, that the chicken piece has sandwiched, isn't it? So there is a one one basic so one slide which is at the lower side of the chicken, and there is one more slide at the uh, upper side of the chicken. Now the in between these two slides, there is a part of chicken. Now you have to press gently these two slides so that the chicken part can get uh, loose and can get evenly arranged on the glass slide so that you can observe it clearly. Now place that slide under the microscope and observe. Then what do you see miss? You can find this type of picture. Here you can see red uh, branch -like, branches like structures these red branch structures are nothing but the cells which are found in the muscles and what these black dots are called means these this is the these are the nuclei these are the nuclei which are seen in every cell in uh, your uh, lower classes you have learned every cell uh, in the center comprises of a nucleus isn't it so if you are seeing this this is also a cell Definitely every cell is comprised of nucleus. That means this cell also should contain a nucleus. So which is clearly visible under the microscope. So I hope you have understood this procedure also. Uh, now we, it is a time to compare muscle cells and epithelial cells. Epithelial cells are the cells which are found in the skin. And these are the muscle cells which make the organ muscle. Now we have to observe these two slides, how these cells are and how these epithelial cells are. Any uh, similarities can you find in these two? No, we cannot find any similarities. What similarity we can find means these all are similar and these all are similar. All the similar cells make the tissue. So here this muscle has all the similar cells which make the muscle tissue. And this epithelial cells has all the similar cells which make the epithelial tissue, which further makes the skin. So here, uh, next step, uh, these are similarity, uh, these are also compactly arranged and these are also compactly arranged. Uh, next step, are there any differences here? Means these are different in their structure and these are also different in their structure. And coming to the function, what the muscle do, muscle uh, contract and relax, isn't it? What these epithelial cells do, it protects our body. It forms a layer on our body, which makes it skin. So th there are some similarities and differences in between these two. Next, we will go to a further slide that is observation of bone cells. Okay, uh, one of our body part is bone. Bone is very, very important. Uh, it makes our body strong. It gives us to, it uh, makes us to stand, isn't it? If we have a shape because of bone. So bone is also made up of tissues, which are called as bone cells. So to observe the bone cells, what the apparatus you need means, uh, you need a bone of hen and you need vinegar or dilute hydro, hydrochloric acid. Okay. And you need glass slides, which will be, which should be two in number, a cover slip, a glass beaker, and a microscope. These are the apparatus which we need to observe the bone cells. So here, what procedure should we follow means, here again, we need a glass beaker, and we need vinegar in that, okay, or dilute hydrochloric acid, in which we have to soak the bone. It is better to soak the bone for at least for two days or you can soak it for a night. So we have to soak the bone for overnight. Okay, why we have to soak it for overnight? Uh, see here children, our bone is very hard. Why it is hard? Because it is made up of some uh, minerals. Which may, what minerals? It is made up of calcium, carbonate. Uh, next it is made up of... <laughs> so. Uh, phosphorus and magnesium, some other minerals are also present. So it is because of calcium, it has its hardness. So to make the bone soft, all of you listen carefully, to make the bone soft, it is very hard. To make it soft, we have to remove the calcium, which is present in that. Calcium gives hardness to the bone. If it is very hard, can we see the cells in that bone? We cannot see. 
So what we have to do, we have to make it soft. How can we make a hard bone into soft bone means by by dipping this bone or by uh, soaking this bone in the uh, acid, okay. After uh, two days or after oh, one complete night, this, bones, this bone becomes loose because the calcium gets uh, uh, dissolved in the acid and it becomes soft. If you observe this picture here, the bone has lost its calcium and it can be bent. Okay, generally we cannot bend any bone. Can we bend, can we bend this uh, bone off our hand? No, if, if we bend it, it will break, isn't it? But here, if you observe this bone has become flexible. Why it has become flexible means it has lost its calcium part. Okay, because of which it has become soft. Now after soaking this in the acid, it becomes soft. Now with the help of a knife, with the help of a knife, you have to, uh, do we have to take a small part of the soft bone, the help of knife, you have to take a small part of the bone and you have to put it under the microscope. Then what do you find means you can find these type of cells. Okay, you can find these type of cells which are bone cells. Okay, children, I hope you have understood. Next, uh, if we, once we will recapture what we have studied, in this class, I have explained you uh, how an organism is formed and uh, I have explained you about the four tissues. I have explained you, I have shown the activities by which we can see different four tissues. That is one is epithelial tissue, which makes skin. Second, muscle tissue, which makes muscle. Third, blood, which is a fluid connective tissue. And the fourth is the bone cells, which makes the bone. So for these, what are required, the requirements also I have explained, everything is over. Uh, once we will see that, have, did we reach our learning outcomes? If you see here, How many types of animal tissues today we have seen means four types. Uh, what are the activities you have performed means? So you have performed uh, four different activities, isn't it? Four different activities. Uh, in that uh, you have taken so many uh, materials, okay? Uh, you, for that you have taken a microscope, a slide, search piece of chicken with skin and bone. And uh, also you have learned how to collect uh, uh, a sample of blood from your finger, okay? Uh, so you have learned various activities. Next, coming to uh, why, why we cannot uh, see WBCs in our blood means the sample which we have taken means to uh, why we cannot see WBCs. WBCs are minute in the structure. This is the first thing, and we need different apparatus. And WBCs are very very less in number when compared to the red blood cells. And why should we soak flesh and bone in vinegar for the observation uh, for the for the experiment means? Uh, acid makes the bone soft. This is the first thing. And why we have to soak the flesh means again, the flesh also becomes loosely uh, loose so that the muscles can get uh, separated from one another and their uh, structure can be easily observed. So children, I hope you have understood very well my today's class. Okay, so I thank uh, you for watching my class. In next class, I'll meet you with another topic. So thank you for watching my class.